Now, as we've been reporting, Angolans are heading to the polls to vote for a replacement for their veteran leader, José Eduardo dos Santos. In today's Focus report, we meet a prominent Angolan rapper, Luati Beiro, who's been an outspoken critic of the president. He even spent time in prison after being accused of planning a rebellion against dos Santos. Beiro fears that, with the ruling party's candidate likely to win today's poll, Angolans are in for more of the same. Caroline Dumay and Leanne de Bassompierre report. As a schisme is the name of the last clip of Iconoclaster. <laughs> As creative as provocative, Luati Birao recognizes his music is a weapon. I was holding my cell phone like this, listening to the instrumental track playing on my computer. And while doing this, I rapped and recorded the lyrics on the cell phone. What I'm doing here is talking about the promises of the MPLA party, all those promises that have not been fulfilled, the promise to build one million houses, the roads that they did build, but these are roads that haven't lasted more than five or ten years and have ended up wearing down and destroying our cars and motorcycles. So the message is feel free to commit suicide, you do what you want, but when you vote for the MPLA party you end up killing other people and that's the problem right there. Long-standing President José Eduardo de Santos is standing down and the ruling MPLA presidential candidate is Defense Minister João Lorenzo. But for the rapper, it's fundamental change Angola needs. From beaches of detritus to those of fine sand, the Angolan society he paints in his songs is teeming with inequalities. From the shanty towns to the phony towns that the government built thanks to the oil boom and where nobody lives because the rent is too expensive. Raised among the bourgeoisie of the regime, Luati is critical of de Santos. But the humor of the artist quickly collides with the political reality of a country in which one does not criticize the regime. The state responds by repression. In 2015, he was arrested with 14 of his comrades accused of planning a coup d'etat. Protesting his illegal pre-trial detention, he went on a 36-day hunger strike and remained imprisoned for a year. An impromptu hero was born. This was the time we somewhat conquered the hearts of the Angolan people. We were catapulted to a whole new level, like defenders of citizens' rights. It's this cap that he finally chooses by creating Jiku, an NGO for the defense of civil rights, which meets regularly in secret locations. O Ministério do Interior emite este comunicado numa altura em que o movimento revolucionário dá a conhecer que realizará manifestações no dia 23 de agosto em todo o país. Mbanza, who was also imprisoned with Luati, takes it as intimidation. It's to spread fear, yet in this country there is already so much more fear than courage. To protest this new measure, the group decides to demonstrate in front of the Ministry of Interior. This is how it works in Angola. Demonstrations here are always spontaneous because they are more often than not forbidden altogether. There's only four of them today, but it's a symbolic victory for freedom of expression. In a few minutes, they have an altercation with police and everybody was immediately told to disperse. You see right here, a tiny rally like this one, they had to come and tell you not to film it. That's Angola for you. And that's what we want to change. As young Angolans, we feel we have to get our foot in the door. If we don't do that, that door is going to remain shut, shut for our children and grandchildren, for everyone. The demonstration is done, social networks are warned, the group quickly breaks up. The smooth running of elections is another challenge. Luati participated in electoral training and doesn't understand why local observers have had so much trouble getting accredited. His friends, who shared his detention, are also skeptical. This election is different to the one in 2012 because we're expecting much more, but there's also more uncertainty. 
Young Angolans really want this election to go off smoothly, and so they decided to practice. So what we're doing here is just a simulation, because it's fun to do so, but also because the act of voting enters people's consciousness. Ideally, in theory, that's how it should be happening. Between the red of the MPLA, the former Marxist party, the green of UNITA, the former rebel movement, and the yellow of Casa Se, the political new kid on the block, Angolans will repaint the future. There's no doubt Econocluster will have enough material to make a new clip about Angola's dreams. Jan Schubert joins me now from the University of Geneva. He's a political anthropologist who specializes in Portuguese-speaking Africa. Hello. Thank you very much indeed for your time today. Now, we were just hearing there from a prominent Angolan rapper who says that, uh, really, if you vote for the ruling party candidate uh, today, you can't expect anything to really change. Do you agree with that? Yes, certainly. Um Juan Lourenço is running on a ticket of both change and continuity, and at the same time, it doesn't seem very credible that he'll be able to um, fulfill both at the same time. So he needs to represent continuity to be acceptable uh, to the MPLA for him to be the hand-picked successor of Dos Santos. At the same time, he promises uh, change to improve what is um, already good, to change what is not um, what is not working well. and. Um, and uh, more specifically, to fight corruption, and especially that last part is um, is not very credible in the minds of most Angolans, um, because he's part of that same system that basically has held the country for the last years, and and has squandered um, the oil revenues uh, that the country has earned while the oil prices were high. He says that he won't be a puppet leader, but I, um, I understand that uh, recently the government passed laws which prevent the next president, if it were him, to, um, from firing the military, uh, police and intelligence chiefs. Exactly. So um, even if uh, Jean Lorenzo might have personal qualities uh, that, that might make him a good president, he'll be, he'll be still beholden to, to Santos. Uh, and some of the appointments that the Santos made uh, will remain in place for at least the next five years, at least according to these decrees. Now, that might change um, after the elections gradually if Lorenzo manages to emancipate himself from the shadow of the Santos. But uh, the way also the de Santos family, especially his children, have um, seized control over key, um, key areas of the Angolan economy over the last three years especially, um, mean that uh, Lorenzo will economically depend on the good graces of the Dos Santos family to be able to pull through any government programme. So they will remain, no matter what, uh, influential in the country then. Um, I'd just like to talk about the youth uh, vote. Um, just how important is it going to be in this election? It's very important because, um, as we heard before, youth activists have been the one who have been heralding the call for change um, and, and have been increasingly vocal over the last four years, and especially since the imprisonment of Lua Tiberon, uh, have gained visibility also in Angola that has changed the terms of the political debate. Uh, however, um, it's very unclear whether in a political system that is so tightly controlled by the ruling party as the one in Angola, uh, that vote will make a difference. In addition, uh, even people who are dissatisfied with the performance of the MPLA might still be voting for the MPLA because they see it as the only party capable of actually running a public administration, and thus running the country, and think maybe we should give Lorenzo a chance to see uh, to see if he can do better than, than Dos Santos, uh, because they distrust the capacity of the opposition parties to run an, an administration successfully. Tell us a little bit about these, these parties challenging the, the, the MPLA and, and their chances uh, of winning today, or just how well do you think they'll do? Um, I think both parties uh, fared reasonably well in the last elections, considering the high levels of abstention and uh, widespread voter disenfranchisement. And that is likely to happen again, especially in the rural areas of the country. Uh, however, um, previous uh, polls and exit polls suggest that, that both Casase and UNITA will increase their seats. And, and that is an encouraging sign, because um, the MPLA is 
very unlikely to win, but if it wins with a reduced majority, uh, perhaps even below an absolute majority, then Leso and, and the MPLA in Parliament might be compelled to um, seriously engage in a dialogue with the opposition, uh, and that can only change um, the Angolan political climate for the better. Now, the economy, jobs, uh, big concerns, big voter concerns today. What will be the main challenges of whoever comes out on top today? The main challenge will be to uh, put the economy again on an even keel. Uh, ever since oil prices have dropped in 2014, uh, the economy has been in massive crisis because it's so heavily oil dependent. So although the MPLA has been trumpeting economic diversification for the last five or six years at least, nothing much has happened in reality and, and everything that's been invested in other sectors of the private economy, especially in banking and construction, is dependent on these oil revenues. And however, while oil revenues were low, uh, were high, uh, parts uh, of these revenues were diverted into private pockets. And that's, uh, that's what makes the crisis now so dramatic, is that this mode of functioning, this logic of functioning, no longer works now that prices are low. So whoever comes into power will have to reform uh, the economy quite seriously. However, if it is uh, the candidate from the ruling party, uh, it remains very uncertain whether he'll be able to actually curb the influence of, of those um, tight-knit regime figures who have um, seized control over, over the economy. All right. Well, thank you very much indeed for your time and your analysis. Jan Schuber joining me there from the University of Geneva. Thank you. Thank you. Quick break. I'll be back in a few minutes at the top of the hour. Stay tuned to France 24.